Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. From 2022 to 2023, the Federal Reserve increased the federal funds rate in order to fight inflation, which reached 40 year highs, peaking at just over 9%. The increase on the federal funds rate was fairly aggressive, and this led to increased interest rates available on high-yield savings accounts and CDs and treasury-backed securities, account types like that, with interest rates hitting the highest level we've seen in over 20 years. But now inflation is leveling out, and the Fed has all but come out and said that they're going to start making rate cuts this year, and the first round of those cuts is expected to come at the September meeting with additional cuts expected to be announced at the November and December meetings. Now, as the Federal Reserve sets the interest rates for banks, the rate at which our banks themselves can borrow money from our nation's central bank, the rates we see offered to consumers is likely to reflect the Fed's decision. So when we see the Fed increase interest rates or increase the federal fund rates, we see that rates on cash-like accounts, high-yield savings accounts, CDs, account types like that, they tend to increase. So now that we're expecting rate cuts, you're likely to see the rates fall on these type of accounts. And it's not necessarily that the rates offered on high yield savings accounts or CDs moves in perfect lock and step with the federal funds rate, but they do tend to follow suit. And as banks are predicting that the next rate cuts will come as soon as September 18th following the Fed's next meeting, some banks may actually begin to reduce their rates offered on these types of accounts ahead of the meeting. Presently, you can find high yield savings accounts paying around 5.5% and money market funds yielding around 5.25%, which are absolutely great rates for the cash that you wanna keep on the sidelines and readily accessible. But please note that the rates offered on high yield savings accounts and money market funds are not locked in. So as the Fed starts to make cuts to the federal funds rate, the rates offered on these type of accounts is likely to fall as well. So if you're interested in locking in the highest interest rate you can right now before the Fed starts to make these rate cuts, it would be worth looking at a CD or a T-bill, both of which are really wonderful places to park your cash-like assets, although they do offer a little bit more inflexibility to them than say a high yield savings account or a money market fund. But the perk with them is that you get to lock in a higher interest rate. So even as the Fed starts to cut rates, you get to hold on to this higher interest rate for a longer period of time. I've said it before in this channel, but I think T-bills are a wonderful option where you can park your cash for the short term and capture a decent interest rate. I've actually done an entire video on everything you could possibly want to know on T-bills that I will link here if you're interested in checking it out. If you look at the trend of T-bills, you can already see that their rates are trending downward, reflecting the Fed's anticipated moves. The wonderful thing about T-bills is that they're pretty easily accessible. You can buy them directly through most brokerage houses like Vanguard or Fidelity, or you can buy them directly through the government's own website, treasurydirect.gov. The other most popular option that offers a locked in rate are certificates of deposit or CDs, which are offered by traditional banks and credit unions. These options tend to come with a little bit more flexibility. While CDs do tend to lock your money up for the length of the CD term, whether that is three months, six months, 12 months, whatever that CD term length is, the money isn't completely inaccessible. Usually if you need to access that money early and pull it out of a CD, you do have that option available to you. However, accessing the funds early tends to come with a penalty, and that penalty is usually in the form of lost interest, but the money isn't completely locked away. Now, it is important to remember that there are very different types of CDs out there, and no matter what, you always want to read the provisions of the specific CD that you put your money into so you understand what is allowed with that CD. Sites like Bankrate and Investopedia both offer a fairly comprehensive list of the best available rates today. I also think it's worth mentioning that I'm not a huge fan of being a rate chaser, so to speak. For example, let's say you're currently with an institution that's offering a 5% rate of return, and you stumble across another one that's offering 5.1% as a rate of return. I don't necessarily think it's worth it to jump ship from one institution to go to the next just for a marginal increase. If you have $10,000, this translates to a $10 increase in interest returns. And to me, moving the money around constantly isn't worth an additional $10. I just wanna make sure I'm capturing a competitive market rate and that's good enough for me. 
I do think it's imperative that you are putting your cash to work. You don't just want your account sitting idly by in an account that's making next to nothing. So this is your friendly reminder that if you have cash that you want to capture a decent interest rate on, now is a great time to capitalize on using a CD or a T-bill if this is money that you don't immediately need but might soon need in the future. So what kind of rate cuts might we be looking at going forward? Well, two thirds of economists are believing that the Fed will start with gradual rate cuts in the ballpark of 25 basis points, continuing with cuts through the end of the year, with over 70% believing that we could see a full 1% cut by the end of December. In terms of the Federal Reserve, when we talk about 25 basis points, that translates to 0.25%. So if the current federal funds rate was 5% and they do a rate cut of 25 basis points, that will bring the federal funds rate down to 4.75%. So if we're saying that we could have a rate cut of 1% by the end of the year, by the end of the year, we might see in this example, a federal funds rate of about 4%. So if these predictions prove to be true, it's very likely that we would see roughly a 1% drop or so on interest rates offered on these cash-like accounts because they would tend to follow the Federal Reserve's moves. It's worth keeping in mind that how the Fed reacts at subsequent meetings is going to depend on feedback from the economy, like jobs, production, consumption, and inflation. And no one can accurately predict what is going to happen over the next year or two. But it's likely the Fed will continue lowering its benchmark rate in 2025 as well, and perhaps even in 2026. So while rates could come down a percentage point this year, they may fall even further over the next two years. When you look at CD terms and interest rates, they tend to reflect this prediction that long-term interest rates are going to be going down. Presently, you can lock in a short-term CD, think three months, six months, or even up to a year, and still capture a rate at or above 5%. But when you're looking at CDs that extend beyond that one-year mark, you see those interest rates start to drop to around 4 or 4.5%. And this goes along with the idea that the banks are predicting that long term, the Fed is going to be bringing down interest rates. And I know I said this before, but I really like sites like Investopedia and Bankrate because they do a wonderful job of finding the very best, highest paying CDs available in today's market. So if you're interested in looking for a place to park some excess cash, I will put links to their analysis down below. Keep in mind that just two years ago, many of these CDs were paying less than 1%. So it really is a great opportunity if you have excess cash that is just simply sitting idly by in an account earning next to nothing, why not put it in an account and capture a decent rate of return? If we take this beyond CD rates or the rates offered by T-bills, when the Fed starts to make cuts to interest rates, this is an attempt to stimulate the economy, to stimulate consumer spending, and this can make loan rates more favorable. As it will bring down mortgage rates, which have recently made housing affordability a stretch for many. Also, as rates tend to come down on cash-like accounts, we may start to see investors favor places where they can get a higher rate of return, as capturing the highest rate of return possible is one of the most important thing for many investors. So you might notice investors start to favor the stock market a little bit more when rates on cash-like accounts tends to come down. Of course, it's worth keeping in mind that the economy as a whole is fairly complex and consumer reactions in the immediate term play a huge factor. So if rate cuts are more aggressive than expected or if they come slower than expected, investors can react negatively in the immediate term just because expectations are not being met. Anything that tends to deviate from what investor expectations are tends to get a negative reaction. But with all of that being said, my main takeaway is that if you have cash sitting idly by that is not earning a great rate of return right now, now is a great time to put it in a CD or a T-bill so you can capture a nice rate of return while these rates are a little bit higher before the Fed starts to make its reductions. And as far as investing is concerned, that advice always stays the same. Stay invested and keep investing, no matter what is happening in the broader market economy as a whole. What are your thoughts on what's happening with interest rates this year? Leave them in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.